Next, I'd like to discuss some other aspects of the electric field. Here I have an electroscope, a couple of spheres, and a Van de Graaff generator. I'd like to begin by charging the electroscope negatively by uh, rubbing the uh, rubber rod with the fur, and we find that when we rub fur and rubber together, the electrons get transferred from the fur to the rubber, and uh, we see that when I then bring the, uh, the rubber rod near the electroscope, that it drives electrons down, causing the arm to move out. If I touch the rubber to the electroscope, then I put some of those electrons on the electroscope, and that arm will stay permanently moved out there until we do something to take electrons away from the electroscope. So now that we have the electroscope uh, charged and the movable arm is standing out, let's show that we have uh, no charge on either of these two small spheres. I'll bring this up close and we see it uh, doesn't have an effect on the electroscope or at least a negligible effect. The other one, as I bring up, also is neutral and has no net charge on it. Uh, next, what I'd like to do then is to charge up the Van de Graaff generator. And if we charge that up, we've shown previously that the Van de Graaff generator, the top sphere, will pick up a negative charge. And we're going to put some excess electrons on that sphere. And in the process, we're going to develop a field, an electric field surrounding that sphere uh, looking something like this. So if we have a charged sphere with negative charge, we'll have an electric field in that space around the Van de Graaff generator. To demonstrate that field, what I'd like to do is to uh, bring up this uncharged sphere in that field. But first of all, let's charge it up and form that field. Uh, we're charging it to the point where the electric field surrounding it is strong enough to cause some electrical discharging. And uh, you can maybe hear that popping sound of miniature lightning. But nevertheless, I now have a charge, a negative charge on that sphere. And uh, to show the effect that it has on another sphere, when brought into that electric field, what it's going to do is that electric field is going to push the electrons from the near side of this little sphere over to the far side. It'll push the electrons from, from the uh, side closest to the Van de Graaff generator over to the side furthest away. And if I set it there then, uh, locate it close enough to where the arcing doesn't take place, but it's in the electric field where the field is strong enough to push electrons to the far side. And just to test whether that's the case, I'm going to bring this other sphere over here, make contact with this sphere and let those electrons on this first small sphere jump over to the second small sphere, thereby charging this sphere up negative, neg negatively, leaving this sphere charged up positively. Since this is charged negatively, it came, the negative charge on this one came at the expense of taking electrons from this one, so this then has a net positive charge on it because it has missing electrons, those electrons now being transferred over to this one. I'm holding this with, with an insulated rod so they don't get transferred over to my body. Now, I take this uh, positive charge over near the electroscope, and we notice the positive charge then attracts the electrons up to the top, taking electrons off the movable arm and letting that arm relax and come in closer to the fixed arm. So next I'd like to show that this sphere is charged uh, negatively by bringing it over near the electroscope. As I bring it near the electroscope, it drives the electrons down. The electroscope, remember, is charged negatively. So as we drive those electrons down, this demonstrates that this has a negative charge on it. So this sphere is charged negatively. This char sphere is charged positively. The charging of those spheres was done by the electric field of the Van de Graaff generator.